Hello and welcome to Live Conversation on Alatra TV. Today with us, we have a very interesting guest. But before we introduce her, I would like to remind our viewers of the format of this show that we have. At the end, we're going to ask Olga, our guest here today, uh, to pick a person that she would like to meet. And we're going to announce who that person is at the end. And then we're going to ask our viewers to spread this video in order to use the rule of six handshakes to see if it really works, um, to see if this video gets to that person. And then next week, we can have both Olga and the guest that she picked on our show together. But please, I would like to remind our viewers to have three hashtags so that we can link how many times this video got shared before it got to the person. Uh, the hashtags are Alatra Unites, Creative Society, and Stay Home. And today I would like to introduce our guest. It is Olga Pikienko, an ex Cirque du Soleil star performer. Olga, please tell us a little bit about yourself. Hello. Um, thank you for having me on your TV show. It's amazing. Um, so I'm uh, an artist, a coach, a mother, and a wife. <laughs> um, so what would you like to hear first? Tell us a little bit about your career. How did you get started? What motivated you? Okay, so um, I started as a rhythmic gymnast at five years old. Um, but rhythmic gymnastics was never something that I really wanted to do. Uh, my father is a, a circus performer. So I watched him as a child and I really, really wanted to become just like my father. So um, it happened. So at uh, 11 years old, I started working with my father and traveled the world. Um, as I was, because I started performing so young, um, I, I could actually, my father could balance me on his hands. So the act was doable. And then when I started growing, um, obviously I became too heavy for my dad and I created my solo act and I auditioned with it at Cirque du Soleil. Um, and two weeks later they called me and they invited me to perform in their shows. And I stayed with them for so long. I stayed with them for 19 years. And yeah, so I kind of almost started my career with them and ended my career with them too. <laughs> yeah, and now I'm a coach. Um, so I coach people from all over the world. I live in the United States and people come to stay with me at my house and train. Yeah. Olga, I know during your career there was happened one um, very tragic accident. You broke your leg. And I was mm -hmm. wondering what helped you to overcome this professional tragedy? Oh my gosh, it's a long story. Um, it could have been, it could have ended up really sad. But thanks to actually Alatra TV, I just picked myself back up. I started understanding a lot about life and um, how you could change things about yourself and it's possible. So, um, so yeah, the, the, ac the accident, it, it was about seven years ago. Um, I was not doing good. My back was hurting and I've, I don't know, I was stressed. I was very stressed. And I remember, huh, it was, I don't remember much positive days. It, I was worried about my age. I was worried about, um, 
that somebody was better than me. And it all just like hit me like, like a roller coaster. I started breaking. I started injuring every part of my body actually. So first it was my back and um, the doctors told me I could no longer perform and I didn't listen to them. So they ended up giving me medication and it was very strong. And again, nothing good came out of it. Um, and then I broke my foot. And the first time I broke my foot, I kind of thought, oh, maybe it's like a sign and I need to stop. And then um, I recovered and I went back on stage and I broke my foot two weeks later. And then I thought like, no, I have to stop. And, and then everything, the world crashed. I, everything that I lived for was gone. So I ended up crying a lot. And I even said like, I don't want to live like this. I just, no, I didn't, I didn't see the, and like the sun of the, at the end of the tunnel, like not at all. And I was not doing good for a while <laughs> for, for, yeah, about two years. And, and I was researching all kinds of information that I could get just to help myself. I was looking for that thread, like just throw me that thread and I would just grab it. <laughs> um, and I couldn't find anything like that. So I remember I had my head full, my, my headpiece on and I was listening to something religious and I, I just decided, you know, I just need to keep on searching for the answers. Like I'm going to find it. <laughs> so something was uh, playing that I was researching and then I fell asleep. And when I woke up before I even opened my eyes, I just understood everything that was spoken about, you know, and um, I was like, oh my God, I understand everything. Everything makes sense. I just, it just, all of a sudden I started to feel that, you know, what I'm listening to is what I need. <laughs> so um, it turned out to be a Latra TV. And um, since then I researched, well, I researched, I listened to probably every, every episode that comes out. Yeah. Um, it really, really saved my life, I think, because it just led me to the right direction and I understood it right away. <laughs> yeah. So, so since then things started to change. Um, at first I started to understand, but of course, um, it was too soon to, to say like, there is a change, you know, but from, from that point, some time has passed and I can see my life is so different. So different. Yeah. There. Thank you so much for sharing Olga and we're really glad that right now you are on Alacha TV and you can share your personal story. Thank you so much for that. Yes. And I, and I hope right now your life has a meaning and uh, full of joy and happiness. Yes. That you can share definitely. with your yeah with your students with the people um, around you. Well, yes. there's another question. I was wondering, I, w I just wanted to tell our viewers, I forgot to tell them at the beginning, we do have a question about Olga. Um, you can find Thank it you. in the description. At what age did Olga start performing or had her first performance? So um, we'll show the results at the end. Um, but Olga, thank you for sharing your story. What would you maybe tell our viewers that are in the same situation right now that are feeling down that maybe think if that their career is over or maybe that hit you know the rock bottom what what would you tell them what advice would you give them that that everything that happens to you it's Hmm. Oh, advice. With advice to look 
and like stop, just stop and look inside and and find and find that love, like just just even a little bit. And every day will grow if you just keep coming back and and nourishing it and just just keep feeling it will come. <laughs> Somebody gave me a really nice advice. It was my husband. And I remember I was like crying every single day. And, and I was like, well, how can I be happy if nothing makes me happy? I'm just like, and he's like, fake it. Fake it until you like, you're really happy. And I actually used his advice. I started to just, I'm like, I should be happy. So I, I would pretend around people that I was happy and then it started to almost be natural yeah so that's that was like the beginning beginning it's a good advice to cut the negativity mm -hmm. and throw it away and just focus yeah. on positive inside that's true that works for me too do we have some pictures, a collage of pictures that we can show of Olga and her, some of her performances? If, um, yeah, that would be nice. Maybe. I would love to see them too. Mm -hmm. Let's do it right now. Oh, there you go. There they are. Upside down performing. I don't know if you can see them, Olga. You're probably on your phone, mm. so you're not, but it's... You're definitely doing some things oh, that... there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely couldn't. <laughs> but we can describe for you. <laughs> How no, no, you them, oh, yeah. I can see them now, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that your dad in one of the pictures holding you? No, this is actually my partner. Yeah, my dancing partner. We just started training together just a few months ago. Yeah. Mm. Very nice, yes. How many days a week you perform right now? Um, well, I am not performing since I actually stopped performing. I have, I've been, uh, doing some galas, uh, which are like just, uh, special shows. Just recently, I just started doing this again. Um, and I'm actually training, uh, for, mm -hmm. to probably perform one day, uh, mm -hmm. again, but yeah, not yet. <laughs> I'm a musician and um, I'm also teaching right now and uh, performing only like a couple times a year. And for me, this like couple times are so special. So mm -hmm. I really started to enjoy and understand, and understand of me, the meaning of it. And here I have my next question about how you choose your profession. So nowadays, so we have tendency that um, people would like to choose profession not by their like inner desire, but by their talent. They choose something that economically stable, secure. Mm -hmm. And I feel like really pity because like I was in that kind of situation, like after I was graduating in a high school and I was thinking that like, I really enjoy, I am a violin player and I really enjoy playing in an orchestra, giving the solo recital, teaching. And, um, but I understood that I probably will not be able to um, sustain my life as a musician, but I decided to take a risk and go forward and proceed my dream. And I see you as a good example of, um, doing the same so um could you please um answer tell me so how you see the uh, society where um people can be happy how you do you think in such a society people will choose their profession of course you will be a lot happier if you are doing something you love um you know it's it's said that the government doesn't have any free education for not just school, but the side activities, yeah? So where kids could 
will try things out and see where they feel drawn the most. You know, because we, I remember we had that in Russia, the way when I was growing up, everything was free. So you could try anything you really wanted, yeah, and stick to something you really loved. So I think if one day that could, that could happen, that would really help. <laughs> but let's dream. Can you describe yes. the creative society? How you, you see it? How do I see it? Hmm. Well, I guess, I guess that's, I guess we just said it, like if, uh, if you're choosing something when you're younger, yeah, and, and if you get to really experience it by training, yeah, that that will really help. Um, how to, yeah. What about the relationship we have with each other today? Not, you know, um, because myself, when I think about a creative society, I always think about maybe mutual help, understanding. Um, also, I was thinking about it the other day, how nice would it be not to have borders where we can travel all over oh, that would be amazing if you wanted to see your family and you didn't need to i don't know that you could just go and visit them at any oh. time and just something that i was thinking about the other day yes and when you go to the different country you don't have to be afraid that if something happened that you don't have a health insurance there so that would be nice if all over the world we will have a good quality uh, free healthcare system that also is my dream <laughs> because i that used to be like nice. yeah so olga one more question i want to ask you before we move on to our other so you said you've traveled a lot mm -hmm. and you've been to a lot of countries what would you say unites people all over the world hmm. What do people have in common? Desire to live, desire to love, and to be loved, I think. I fully agree. <laughs> I think the same. If you would ask me the question, that would be my answer. Yes. <laughs> Maybe right now we can see the answer to the question we asked our viewers about at what age did Olga have her first performance, if we can have that on the screen. Yes, I'm excited too because I also gave my answer. Let's see. And I don't know. The biggest number is what people said the most. So most people said six. And then we have 10, 12, 13, 9, 4, and 7. So Olga, maybe you can tell us. Eleven. The answer. <laughs> Eleven. Eleven. <laughs> oh, the only number that was missing. <laughs> This, yeah, we have 10, we have 12, but we don't have 11. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so now maybe um, now we're going to get to this point of our show where uh, we're going to ask you to tell us the name of a person that you would like to meet. Uh, and we're going to share this video. And by using the rule of six handshakes and the hashtags, uh, Alatra Unites Creative Society and Stay Home, we're going to see if this video will get to the person that you pick. So maybe right now you can tell us the name of the person that you would like to meet, or if it's maybe a person of a certain profession, or who is it going to be? So you're going to laugh. Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> okay, okay. So we're going to see if um, by using the rule of six handshakes, um, 
we can make that happen. And uh, we're going to ask our viewers to share this video with the hashtags to see if we can have Igor Mikhailovich Danilov um, here as well to speak with Olga. Um, Olga, did, is there anything that we forgot to ask, maybe something that you wanted to add today? I uh, just thank you so much for having me. This was a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, Olga. Thank you. It was so nice having you. It's a real pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers, and uh, we will see you tomorrow. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>